Living on a boat can be expensive, but is it more expensive than living on land? Today we'll give you a detailed overview of the costs of living here, here, oh here! While other sailing channels will do a similar topic around how to save money while living on a boat, you've come here today for the real numbers. So that's what we're going to do. One of our missions since moving on board has been to help democratize boat ownership and living aboard while cruising. What's traditionally been seen as a lifestyle reserved for the rich is now totally within the grasp of many. In many ways, the advances in technology and the ability to work remotely has helped this enormously. That said, there's been a lot of surprises since moving on board Talia that we simply didn't account for. So we're going to share the lot with you today. So let's dive into the cost over five categories. Initial costs, insurance and registration, maintenance, living costs and excursions and eating out. Initial costs. Your ongoing costs will be relative to the initial outlay for your boat. What I mean by this is, if you're cashed up and you buy a brand new half a million dollar boat, your maintenance costs will be less, or at least that's a theory, than somebody who's bought a much older boat. I paid 55,000 euros for a 17 year old boat, which had been pretty well maintained actually. The boat survey itself cost 800 euros for a comprehensive 32 page condition report. To satisfy the insurers, I upgraded the original standing rigging, which cost 4,000 euros, and then set out to set up Talia for cruising. Here are some of the big ticket items. I installed 300 watts of solar onto the Bimini, and upgraded the house batteries with three 110 amp hour AGMs. At the same time, I upgraded the starter battery with another 110 amp hour AGM. I am amazed by the quantity of solar panels some people install. For us, this configuration works perfectly. Right now, we're sitting in this windy anchorage on an overcast day. It's not even 9 a.m. in the morning and our batteries are already topped up to 100%. I also installed a new Victron solar regulator and a smart battery monitor. I then upgraded a lot of the onboard tech, like the VHF, to the new B&G V60 with its very handy wireless handset, the latest B&G Vulcan multifunction display with Navionics, and an AIS transceiver. These cruising upgrades came in at around three and a half thousand euros. Then of course came the oversized Mantis Anchor, freshly imported from the US and weighing in at over 25 kilos. She keeps us holding tight in a windy anchorage, just like today. This cost 800 euros. Now, of course, no cruising vessel would be complete without a dinghy. So we bought a 2.3 meter 3D tender from France, affectionately known as T2, and kitted her out with a three and a half horsepower four stroke outboard. The dinghy cost 800 euros and another 900 euros for the outboard. So altogether, it cost us 65,800 euros to buy Talia and get a spec out to a degree that we were satisfied with to start cruising. Insurance and registration. So just like a car, your insurance cost is based on the age and the type of boat you have. Yeah, exactly. But unlike a car, your insurance differs based on your cruising zone or the extent thereof. So if you're planning to cruise, say, the Horn of Africa or the Mediterranean, you can expect varying costs here. Since we're starting out here in the Med, our coverage for this zone costs just over 800 euros per year. We received quotes ranging from 800 to 1,000 euros. Now, registration costs depend a lot on which country you can actually flag your boat with. Your nationality definitely has a bearing on this. Since both Laura and I are EU citizens, we could register our boat with pretty much any EU flag, but our home country of Belgium offered the best price and flexibility. So for only 200 euros, Tali is registered for the next five years. Maintenance. It goes without saying that the age and condition of the boat you buy will have a bearing on your maintenance budget. Since buying Talia, I've always kept spares for the engine on board, and I've made it my mission to learn how to maintain as much of the engine as possible and other important systems, 
just in order to sort of keep a lid on those maintenance costs. Under this category, we included the cost of engine oil, coolant, a substantial investment in Seekerflex, new lines, products to clean Talia, new running rigging for the reefing lines, the installation of a new fuel gauge, and then of course those chandlery and hardware store visits. This all comes in around 150 euros a month. Here we'll also add the costs of the new sales, which came in at just over 4,000 euros for the new mainsail and Genoa. It's also worth mentioning that our friends in Menorca who organise the Ark crossing each year convinced us to upgrade our safety equipment. So that meant a new life raft for 800 euros, which was actually on sale, plus a new inflatable Dan Boy, inflatable horseshoe, floating throwing lines, and two new life jackets for a grand total of an additional 470 euros. Living costs. So when it comes to groceries, we do the bulk of our shopping in local farmers markets. Nothing beats fresh local produce at a fraction of what you'd pay in the supermarket. Sure. So every week what we try and do to save a little bit of cash is come to the markets, not only to save cash but also to support local growers. As the black and grey water waste is emptied out into the sea, it's important to us that we buy organic products like shampoo, soaps and sunscreens too. Sadly, this often comes in at a bit of a premium. On average, we spend 500 euros on groceries and shopping each month. Here we also need to account for the diesel to keep the boat moving when the wind isn't playing ball, and cooking gas which comes in at just over 80 euros a month. Admittedly, over the last year we probably spent more time sleeping in marinas than at anchor, but with setting Talia up for cruising, and entering the cruising season late because of the Covid restrictions, plus of course getting caught up in the strong Mistral winds in the autumn, we had little choice. Our average mooring fees per month are 440 euros, including what we paid for our winter contract in Sicily. As for laundry, you could use a bucket and some elbow grease, just like Laura and I have been known to do on occasion, or opt for laundromats. Generally speaking, we pay around 35 euros a month on laundry. And then finally, as much as we love getting off grid at sea or in sleepy anchorages, we still need to upload videos to YouTube each week and communicate with the outside world. So in each country we go to, we pick up a local SIM card for our phones. Here in these Mediterranean countries, data costs have dropped dramatically in recent years. We typically we pay around 25 euros a month for unlimited data on our two mobile phones. So in total, our living cost each month comes to 1,080 euros. Excursions and eating out. So to capture the beauty of some of the places we visit on camera, we often push our excursion budget a little bit here. Included in this is the cost of car hire and fuel, which comes in around 200 euros a month. So I was a little bit surprised when we calculated the costs of eating out. Over the winter, we did the bulk of our cooking on board, averaging around 50 euros a month for eating out. Naturally, this figure was influenced by most restaurants being closed due to COVID. But in summer, we had some expensive nights out in places like Valencia, Ibiza, Mallorca. But this puts our average for the last 12 months at around 110 euros per month. So how do we afford it? Well, I've had this dream of moving on board since I was a kid. About five years ago, before buying Talia, I put the wheels in motion. I had my full-time job, but that 
wasn't going to be enough, so I rented out the second room in my apartment, and in parallel, I built my own coaching business, which I was working on after hours and over the weekend. Admittedly, the last few years before moving on board were pretty intense, but through this, I managed to save enough money to buy Talia, and together we saved enough to get by for just over a year. In our view, the sacrifices we made to get here were totally worth it. This is a unique kind of lifestyle with a profound connection with nature, in all of her beauty and with all of her force. We're learning and growing in ways we never would have dreamed of before moving on board, and that makes it so worthwhile and really a very, very special experience. Thanks to YouTube and the support of our very kind Patreon, we started to make revenue on our weekly videos earlier this year, and it's actually our dream now to continue bringing this adventure to your screens. So we've sat down and we've run the numbers. Continuing to make these videos can only be done realistically with a bit of help. We kicked off our Patreon page as a way to get closer to our viewers, to understand them and their aspirations towards sailing, but also offer behind the scenes view on what this lifestyle is really like for us. We know a lot of you watch our videos each week and we love receiving your messages and reading your comments. For us to continue making this content, we realistically need to make around 2,000 euros per month. If you find value in our videos and have a few dollars, pounds or euros to spare, then why not consider becoming a Patreon? Your support would really mean the world to us and help us to keep these weekly videos coming your way. We love all our viewers, so even if you can't afford to become a Patreon, don't worry. A thumbs up, a comment down below, or sharing our videos will always put a smile on our face and motivate us to continue making these videos for you for as long as we possibly can. Thanks guys for watching today's episode. If you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you same place, same time next week. Cheers, legends. Cheers. <laughs>